Coming up this week, Ubuntu 1710 gets official. WPA2 is cracked. Building a Raspberry Pi jack in the box. And Fedora ack, support will soon be a thing. Great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about just some of the stories that we personally found interesting going on in this wild and wacky ecosystem environment. Mm, something, Par- something. Paradigm. I don't know. <laughs> it's cold. I'm having a hard time thinking. What's up, Pedro? What's new? Well, uh, there's a new processor ticking inside my box, mm-hmm. so to speak. Uh, it's a Ryzen 5 uh, 1600, and it's been working really well. I even when I put the PC together, everything worked on the first go. The RAM overclock profile just worked. Everything is going really well. Something's bound to go very wrong very soon. Ah, <laughs> and joining us for a second week, um, all the way from Finlandia, um, that's Jordan. You know him, Mr. I, Swing. Maybe you do. I, I actually went to a concert hall called Finlandia, which was kind of weird. Okay, that's pretty frightening. Uh, is everything yeah. nice, cold, icy? It, it, it's it's a, it's a little frosty. It's mostly still rainy. I I, I saw the sun the other day. That that, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was a little pale like disc in the sky. I took a picture of it. I'll post it on Google Plus or something like that. But good times. So um, enough of that business. Let's just jump right. I forgot to cut the tablet off. Into uh, geez, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a very popular man but it, it was terrible man it, it got some attention no um 1710 man it's got it's got a release date we gotta talk oh, about yeah. it oh yeah and it's tomorrow it's tomorrow so if you're watching this on the day of release uh hey it's the day uh October 19th 2017 is when the uh new version will officially be released although if you are running one of the betas as I discovered today when I ran the updates on the uh IBM ThinkPad uh, turns out all of the final versions of all the packages, it was like 180 packages that needed updating. Yeah, it works. But then again, that's 12-year-old hardware, so it should. You you say that like it's given. I mean, I think at a certain point, the hardware gets a little more questionable about whether or not it's going to come together. But I do say everyone get out there and test it while I wait a few weeks and let all the big bugs uh, completely get sorted out. October 19th, that's a thing, 1710. It's going to be the first one in a while that ships with GNOME as your default desktop environment. And it would be interesting for you to write us and let us know how it broke your system completely, which I, I don't <laughs> think it will. Um, you, you have no dog in this hunt, as they would say, do they? I, I ha- as I've said before, I have no dog in this horse. Uh, are, don't, don't 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 you usually track the LTS though? So you're gonna you're gonna be going to eighteen oh four, yeah? I, I will definitely be settling on eighteen oh four. Yeah, I, I mean, like, yeah, it's it's the thing. Um, Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I know some people are excited about it, and. I'm just say a good rule of thumb. Don't listen to anything I say. That's the first one. But the second one is give it a week or two for for the for the big gotchas to kind of get out of the way before you dive into that. But on that same topic, elementary, which is based on uh, yeah, an uh, 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 Ubuntu derivative using Ubuntu technology. Shock! I'm terrified. So this, 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 this is an entirely impartial article and interview. Uh, from the <laughs> f- folks at Ubuntu about uh, about elementary OS and their integration of snaps, which incidentally they have not quite done yet. So uh, it's basically just a bunch of softball questions lobbed for the sake of promoting s- the snap packages. Uh, they're coming down the pipe. Uh, so they they asked the elementary guys uh, why you think this is a good idea, and it basically boils down to Ubuntu Canonical went up to them, got on their knees, and just begged, "Please use our technology." Please use our technology. We'll put you on the oversight board. We'll give you we'll give you a say in the entire architecture thing. Just use our use our stuff. And so they are because app- apparently the the guys at Flatpak or Docker didn't uh, didn't sufficiently suck up to these uh, folks. Uh, but the interesting thing that uh, I'm I'm actually surprised that they put this in the article. 
but they haven't actually integrated snaps into their build system or into anything like that. So this is like it's purely hypothetical, right? Yeah, no, it, it's great. It looks promising. We we get lots of language like this, but not much else. It's it's kind of a fluff piece. Yeah, yeah, there are a few conditionals there, and my first reaction was, it's elementary, it's Ubuntu-based, why is this news? Oh, it's news that they haven't already introduced it, and in fact, they haven't really accounted for it on their new fangled uh, software center thing? I don't know what they call it. App hmm. Store? It, yeah. I don't know, man, I mean, it's, it's still early days for snaps, and I'm absolutely reading through that, that... This is all like hypothetical for them because they haven't begun in integrating the snap into their infrastructure. So like, it sounds like a good idea. And we did talk about last week that Solus is going to be going for snap. So I'm like, all right, Ike, you do what you got to do, man. You do you. This is kind of what Jordan was saying earlier. I mean, it's based on a Ubuntu core or a Debian core, however far back you want to go with that. Kind of makes sense. It's like, I would expect you to do that. So, ab 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 absolutely. I mean, yeah. it, and I'm 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 just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Where um, <laughs> we're we're gonna get an article on the uh, on the elementary blog that says, after months of agony, <laughs> we cannot integrate snaps into our in distribution, so we're going with Flatpak. <laughs> I'm, I'm in 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 before that. Okay, that could definitely be a thing. Um, this exists. This. <laughs> This is the thing. Uh, if, 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 if you're a cutie, you want to use it. It is a cutie, and it is cutie browser. Uh, version 1.00. I mean, it is absolutely out. What is it? You never heard of it? A keyboard-driven browser with a Vim-like minimalistic interface written entirely in spite. Um, Col uh, colon Q, exclamation point. Might have made that last bit up. But yeah, it's like links for X, maybe. I don't really understand the use case of this, and that's why I put it in the show notes, because I want to know who uses this. And I mean, users? Rat, 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 rat poison users, people who don't want to <laughs> touch a mouse. Uh, be, 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 these are the folks who use the tiling window managers because they don't want to, they want to be all keyboard all the time. The, the, there's your simple key binding, uh, <laughs> It's very intuitive. Do you, I, do you use H and L for forward and back? I don't know, man. Uh, it's out. It's got some bug fixes. I I don't want to say anything bad about it. I actually tried to get it up installing, man, because I got a little tox thing. It's like, hey, do this, launch it. And even on um, 1704 with a Kubuntu, it was like, no, man, I need Python 3.5. And I'm like, I'm not messing with Python. So... Uh, it's in the repos. You, chances are you could have probably installed it. Well, but... the, uh, Pedro, I immediately slammed into the, do I really care that much, Walt? <laughs> um, Fair enough. Now, uh, it did, this is another one of those that I looked at the name, oh, cute browser. Oh, it's another browser based on Qt. No, well, it is. But uh, the big selling point here is very much the keyboard-driven interface, which again, Vim users. There, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. You see, this is why <laughs> I'm interested in this because I can hot hotkey keyboard hotkey my way through links. That will save you yeah. if you're ever stuck in an environment where X is just not installed within. Yeah, miles. and there 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 are a million and six browser extensions for Chrome, Firefox, or what have you that will add the keyboard macro shortcut support stuff in there. So I. I mean, it, it, it's another, it's based on Qt WebKit anyway, so you're getting the same stuff that you would in like your Chrome or your Safari or anything like that. So I, it, it's it's there if you want it, right? It more more options is good, even though it's all just WebKit derivative, and it further cements WebKit as the new Internet Explorer six of the modern era. Quite possibly. Um, so. Uh your thing's Fedora. You've worked with Firefox and Fedora and packaging and stuff like that mm -hmm. in the past, and they have some new sounds for us. Oh, yes. Yes, they do. They have some <laughs> sounds. <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> right, Pedro, the person he was talking to. <laughs> go, go, go on. It is your story. Uh, no, uh, this uh, blog post was uh, written by Urius. That is very close to, uh, but never mind. Uh, 
uh, starting with Fedora Workstation 27, uh, they will include a codec for AAC, or ACH. Uh, the advanced audio codec was um, originally created as an MPEG alternative, but there are actually two different versions of it out there. One of them is being used by Apple in iTunes uh, for distributing their music, and the other one was being actively maintained by the same people behind MP3. That's Fraunhofer. So now, now, what, what, what I find interesting about that, too, is Apple, Apple does also... Um, anyway, uh, that, that, that was, you guys that was keep going. Point. I'll be right back. I just had a fan kick on that I need to go kill. All right. Okay. Uh, one, one, one of the one of the main points of uh, contention though was um, that for a, for a while people were really really uh, ticked off because there was a lot of uh, DRM loaded with the uh, Apple AAC implementation. Yep. And uh, Amazon came in with their MP3 store and uh, started making a serious dent into Apple into iTunes uh, sales. So uh, eventually Apple coalesced and iTunes started selling DRM free MP3s. Uh, that that said, you may have some older albums that are still in the AAC format, and you want to listen to them. I've actually gone through the exercise of converting them all over to uh, MP3. Um, but I mean, th this this is good because out of, out of the box support for codecs is great. It's kind of been a pain point in Fedora. You had to install the GStreamer plugins ugly package at RPM Fusion if you wanted um, you wanted to listen to your MP4s or your MP3s. Well, but I mean, now the now they installing have the, MP3 the extras package has been a thing since I was using Red Hat back in yeah. the day. Yeah, I mean, that was just something you had to do out of the box. The one thing I don't like about this is uh, they, it's like, oh, this is our crafted version, so it, it may or may not work with some AAC issues because, you know what, we're Fedora and you should be used to it by now if you use Fedora, so... Uh, I'm 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 certain there's going to be minimal issues, if any. And, I, I, and again, like, most 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 people don't have AAC encoded audio anymore. It's the world is pretty much standardized on MP3. Uh, that's <laughs> we record to AAC lossless. Well, then you know what? What? The, the actual I'm still, show I'm, you're I'm on right now. Sensible people right. don't use AAC. I, I I I I will maintain just for the sake of contradicting you, that, <laughs> that 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 that's it for 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 no other reason whatsoever. Okay, seems I mean it's good. It, it's progress, you know. Uh, they got MP3 support finally, and now we got this. Next, <laughs> next, next thing you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I start Fedora. shipping proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that'll that, never. Uh, no, no, no. That, that's, that, been that's, further, that, that's, that's been that further away, all things considered. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, do, do you think this new lap is going to support the AAC? Uh, uh, it could. Maybe. Assuming there is, uh, there is actually a Fedora version for ARM. And, well, <laughs> Jordan, <laughs> of course last week. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan last week mentioned that he would like to see uh, more ARM64 laptops, and someone may have been listening because the Terrace 1, or Terrace I, uh, is a DIY open source laptop that you can buy uh, either pre-built or as a kit for you to put together. It's available on their website uh, for around 200 ish dollars, which is a bit expensive. To be fair, but the okay. big thing for me, uh, and I'm kind of with Jordan on this one, which is cheap 64-bit ARM DIY laptops is something I'd very much like to see take off. Not just for the sake of it being what it is, but the kind of mods and the custom, you know, customization that happens around that and the community that forms around it that keeps on developing that customization. That is a really awesome thing. We've seen it with a Raspberry Pi and it would be awesome to see that in a kit or a laptop that is more geared at your traditional desktop laptop type of computing rather than the embedded projects. While true, everything you said is actually true. I mean, this one does come installed with 1604 LTS. Mm -hmm. uh, running mate. Hey, Wimps. What's up, man? Uh, Firefox browser. I do still kind of feel, and what I'm about to say, don't take it in the wrong way, this is still kind of a tinker toy, and they allude to that on their web zone by saying, man, this, if you, if you really, okay, if we're going to be just blunt, what they say on, on their web zone is, if you got to do any real work, this is not, this is not what you need to buy. You don't need to mess around with this. This is definitely something I'd like to play with, but 
I don't know what the use case would be. As soon as I start looking at something like this, I'm like, well, I'll just plug a monitor into a Pi. And yeah, or or something like a like a, a low power laptop to check your email on the go, which is what a tablet is. I mean, when when I when I mentioned I wanted a sixty four bit ARM laptop, this was not what I was talking about. This is this is nice, uh, but I was more thinking along the lines of one of those hex or dec or octo core or deca core AMD server grade ARM CPUs with like NVMe, like actual RAM. Uh, some expansion slots so that you could have some like nifty co-processors processors, or like slide in dedicated GPUs or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. cause, Cause like much like Pedro said, um, our arm is becoming a very, it, it's not necessarily an open platform, but the standard is very well known and well documented. Uh, John Masters at Red Hat is agonizing over making that the case so that arm becomes as boring as x86. Uh, through the use of UEFI, whether you think that's a good idea or not, his he does have some valid points regarding that. Uh, uh, but it it is a neat little DIY project. Um, I I just want a beefier board. So what you're saying is we, we need power on mobile with the laptops, like power four, power eight, something like that. Yeah, no, like just <laughs> get your old uh, clamshell fruity MacBooks, and yeah, get uh, get Linux running on those. <laughs> Could be a thing. Um, OK, Google is going to be a thing of the past, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that, 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 that is that is a very bold claim, Mr. Stone. Uh, the, the, this is Dragonfire, though. This is an open source virtual assistance for Ubuntu based Linux distributions. I have not actually tried to get this up and running on um, on Fedora, but it's, it seems like it also had a, the main reason it's Ubuntu based is because it has a front end for apt. So if you, you can say, hey, computer, he hello, computer. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you didn't see that. I did, I did my Scotty from the Voyage Home impression. Um, uh, yeah, just to in install package software. Uh, they, they, they give you a couple examples here where you can say you can give it facts to quote unquote memorize. And it has some natural language processing. So you can give it instructions to, say, set alerts or install packages or open up things. Basically, if you want to feel like Iron Man screaming at Jarvis, this is this is your project. I do kind of <laughs> want to play with it just because I bet you can make it say some really messed up stuff. And that would be hilarious. Oh, you could. I, I think the biggest thing with this update is, I mean, it now fully runs on local. So, mm -hmm. you know, your paranoia and all that fun stuff. Uh, kind of want to play with it, but, you know, I kind of phrased it with, hey, do you do you like screaming at your mobile device only to have it ignore you 90% of the time? Want to replicate that experience on the desktop? Then do we have the product for you? Uh, or, or, or you can just buy a cat. I don't hate myself that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout at your cat for two things. Um, <laughs> See how that works. <laughs> hey, hey, man, I, I like projects like this because <laughs> why not? I, I mean, it looks neat, and you can just install it with D-Package. It's pretty simple out of the box. I mean, if you just want to kick the wheels on it. Uh, with us, I guess the big question is, now here, here's, the, here's the real thing, especially for me and you, Jordan, because we... Our microphones require phantom power. Mm, like yes. we, we would have a legitimate off button. Like, burp, okay, it's not always on listening. But who has a, outside of like a laptop, who else would have a always on listening microphone? Yeah, and and that's the thing you would you would need to set something like that up um, to to make this sort of like more like I said of a Jarvis type scenario or. Uh, Majel Barrett from Star Trek as like the the computer right you're, you're beam beam me up T T Earl Grey hot that would actually be kind of neat is if you could hook this into like a Raspberry Pi into like a coffee maker or something <laughs> and get it to just make you tea or coffee that would that would actually be awesome I would so so Linux Nuru get on that, I know that is exactly up your alley start fires in your kitchen remotely um <laughs> yes. Uh, but but uh, speaking of fires, there was um, oh, there was a bit of a was there was a, a bit of a one. fire uh, going on. Wait, uh, wait, do you mean the entire internet lost its gosh darn mind? Um. Well, uh, you you got to be a little more specific there, Brad. Uh. Whoop, whoop not... indeed. But uh, yeah, this is this is this is crack. Uh, otherwise known as the key reinstallation attack. Um, which is. 
the the big hot topic this week. Um, basically, they found a rather large exploit at that that is fundamental to the WPA protocol. Insofar as you can uh, using um, using a crafted uh, replay of the uh, four way handshake, you can mm-hmm. essentially get it to set initialization values for encryption that you can then predict, which means that you can. Easy, very easily sniff um, or gain access to Wi-Fi traffic. And this is especially insidious because when combined with uh, stuff like SSL um, stripping and whatnot, uh, you can actually uncover quite a bit of information. I, add, I added in the show notes that, oh yeah, you should be using SSL and VPN, but that's not, uh, that's not a perfect solution for getting around this. Uh, you, can, you, can read the, uh, full, uh, you can read the full breakdown of the vulnerability uh, in, in the article in the show notes. Uh, the the sad thing is, once again, Linux falls especially victim to this because they actually yep. implemented the specification to the letter, and uh, there 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 was so, there was some comment in the RFC re- rega- regarding um, clearing encryption keys that Linux has implemented that other operating systems has not have not that make this uh, particularly easy to exploit. There are a b- number of CVEs out. Uh, distributions are already uh, pushing out patches for this. You're going to have to pull packages from Rawhide if you're in Fedora. They actually published an article on their blog about that. Um, Ubuntu has packages right away. Uh, FreeBSD um, actually released patches for this early, which was kind of problematic because if some if some clever hacker was paying attention to FreeBSD commits, they'll say, hey, what's this about? Oh, I haven't heard about a disclosure of this. Let me see if I can take advantage of this on, uh, on other... Um, Another operating system. That's uh, absolutely true, and and yeah, Maddie, you, uh, Maddie and Shot World, uh, uh, Internet of Thing devices. Also, Linux has got a big problem with this because guess what's running on your router, Linux, and, and, and your fridge, what's running and on your, your tablet, bulb. and, mm-hmm. and so your, the Linux and, kernel, and your light bulb, so. and your television, and your home phone. And the biggest thing with the toaster. routers, I mean, in, unless you're, you know, if you're still running stuck, there's a good chance it's never going to get updated. But mm-hmm. um, Ethernet, all the things, but I'm say a quick, no, you don't need to panic. You don't need to worry. No one's going to be blowing you up. Um, yeah, SSL and all the others that Jordan mentioned are a way to sort of work around yeah. it, but you're it, still, it, it, it's, it's not, you're still leaving right. yourself open to a man in the middle. Do you got to assume anyone listening to this show is already going to be doing safe security practices. I mean, if you're yeah. ultra paranoid, man, Take your iDevice, your Android device, whatever. Open up a copy of Wi-Fi Analyzer. And as long as all the um, station IDs are just like default around you, you don't have anything to worry about. If you get a bunch mm-hmm. of custom names, you know, like you see FBI Surveillance Van 6. and <laughs> th- That means you got some <laughs> if people that... If I see that... that in the UK, should I be worried? Probably. No, the, 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 that, that, that means that one of my neighbors has a sense of humor. <laughs> well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. If... That, that might be your first clue. If they have the competency to change their SSID, then you're like, yep. mm, then, then maybe. But yeah, don't don't worry about it. In this house, this house is Wi-Fi proof because um, multiple reasons. Like if, if I... If, mostly Jordan. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Maybe because I violated the temporal accords. On multiple <laughs> occasions, as I said. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, don't don't panic. And good on you, Ubuntu. Before the end of day, I, I got a push. It was like, oh, update available. And it's like, oh, all right. Ubuntu, I, Solus, yeah. Uh, everyone seemed to have been on point when this broke out. So kudos to you all. Yeah, um, th- yeah, but like Ben said, the the big thing is going to be Android phones, right? Because mm-hmm. yeah, um, a, a lot of a lot of uh, phones you you buy them from the carrier or whatnot, and they handle your software updates, and they're really, really, really bad about that. Right. So un- unless you're inst- unless you're running something like Lineage, mm-hmm. uh, your your device is going to be fairly vulnerable, and your telco is not really going to care oh. because why should they bother? They would you- rather sell you a new device. Absolutely. Oh yeah, this one's totally protected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, un- un- until the next phone. But but I mean, this this affects everything. It affects Mac. It affects Windows. Um, it it is a Anything problem specific to WPA. The... It's vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. But, there, there, uh, there, there, there's a, there was a comment on there. Should we switch back to web? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, back no, to please. Web. I want free internet. Come I, on. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I'm going to be honest with you. If you're still using web encryption, because I always carry in my backpack a um, Netgear uh dongle that does packet injection just for those occasions uh 
Yeah, no, the um, Wi-Fi card on my netbook can do packet injection mm. with the regular driver, so, yeah. <laughs> yes. so, okay, um, let's encrypt oh, something. This, yeah, this is, this is really cool. We talked a little bit about this uh, last week when we were discussing uh, Firefox's round of funding. Uh, but this is an article from Let's Encrypt. They're saying that Acme support is available in the, H- in the Apache HTTPV project. Um, it, this is using ModMD, which is a uh, – uh, uh, it uses the Acme protocol to automatically register uh, SSL certificates. So they have this little video here. And if it works as as shown here, this is really cool because you add two lines to your Apache configuration. <laughs> and all of a sudden you have magical SSL right off the bat. That is really, really cool. It makes deploying SSL really, really, really simple. And as someone who, as I said in our little meeting beforehand, I've spent a not insignificant amount of time deploying custom CA infrastructure. This just makes me happy. Uh, I, I, I want to see. I'm, I'm curious if they have something similar for Nginx. I'm sure they will in about five minutes. But yeah, that uh, won't be long. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it just makes uh, it makes uh, deploying SSL really, really easy. You just set it up. You don't have to worry about setting keys or anything. It'll do this for you. It's great. I gotta say though, Nano really ew. still better than Vim. Listen here, a lawn off of it. Um, <laughs> for Nano, what, what do you? I have no room to talk. A, I, I still use Nano, but I for you no, use Gedit, man. I use Gedit for way too much, way too many times. I'm in the terminal and will type Gedit. I was like, how backwards is this? <laughs> You know, I, I realize it as first, it's not like I need to open something big. You need to make a small edit and yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I still tap app get. So. Uh, no, I, uh, I kind of appreciate the a- APT just type APT done. So three letters, Jordan, what is the advantage of this over the previous, um, scripts that I've seen to deploy? Let's encrypt. Um, you with with this, you literally don't have to do anything. Mm, uh, two like. lines to your configuration file, and away you go. Uh, before you had to run like a shell script, which had to like set up some exposed um, file that is unique to your server, so that these guys can verify your domain is in fact yours. Mm-hmm. Which is really really fun if you're trying to deploy Let's Encrypt on custom applications, because it basically results in I had to take down a production app, rewrite its HA proxy config to make that thing work. Get the SSL cert and then reconfigure it, revert the configuration so that the application would actually work. So something like this, much better. And this is going to handle with like the expert expiratory rotation and um, that I don't actually know. This would this would be something uh, to look into where because um, the uh, Let's Encrypt certificates are only really valid for ninety days. Mm-hmm. So hope so hopefully this thing is smart enough to say, hey, your certificate's expiring, going to auto renew because that seems like a fairly intuitive feature to include in your SSL automation thing through Let's Encrypt, but you never know. Well, I think it's a great thing, absolutely, because, I mean, we have a Komodo cert, but we'll be going to Let's Encrypt probably on next round. Is I, I just love that they made this accessible, as in free to everyone, and mm-hmm. now as like this extra, you know, macho man elbow smash, like, and now we just made it easy. They, they they made it stupid easy. Like yeah. uh, like 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 I said, two lines in your Apache configuration file. That that is ridiculous. Hmm. Well, I, I I did one line in your app get update to get Blender working with your graphics card because I, I wanted to do this out of curiosity. I don't know how to blender, but I didn't know how to do this either. And I went on a Google search a few weeks back. I've been saying I was going to make this forever. And I had to go to like four different sites and piecemeal this thing to get it up and running. Uh, this is just GPU render on 1704. The Kombutu should work for basically anything, Debian based, easy enough to adapt. And this is on our web zone. I put it up. Really, all you need is Blender, NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit, G, and Mod Probe. Give that business a reboot. And I just show you how to do it. Page, not page by page, but just click by click set GPU compute on, and then you go from, I think on the Ryzen 7, the BMW demo took like six minutes on, on the 1700, and with using 
And this works with multiple video cards. Atomic from Shadow put three video cards in just because he with, felt like it. Yeah, from completely different generations too. Right. And it, it worked. And I'm using a 980 with a 770 and GPU on that. Once you kick your tile size up to like 256, uh, it was like two minutes. So, yeah. and, and uh, I was going to say one page at a time. What are you, Pharonix? Every every <laughs> single step has its own page. Got to get those clicks, man. Oh man, uh, no. go ahead. Yeah, but no, I was, I was just going to say, good good on you, Ven, for putting this up. This is this is really good. I I actually, as a member of this show, I actually really enjoy watching your how-to videos. So <laughs> the main reason is you get the, the old man Ven quick and dirty how-to because the one thing I loathe harder than hard is when I'm trying to see a how-to instructional video on YouTube, and the guy's like, yeah, my girlfriend left me. Oh, and I was doing this over here. Let's listen to some background music, too, while we're talking. For, like, the 20 seconds of possible, and you got to watch the whole thing to see if you can find that 20 seconds of information in the, you know, 10-minute long video. Mm -hmm. That's recorded at six frames a second at 640 by three sometimes. (laughs) And... Well, so so it's it's meant to view on like the Mac touch screen yeah. RG bar thing. You have to use the touch bar. My my goal for anything that I end up making is get you in and out in five minutes. Nothing but the facts. Let's do this. And do you know what makes that possible? A um, bunch of people drugs. throwing silly silly amounts of money at our heads. Uh, also drugs, <laughs> like caffeine. Yes, yeah. and nicotine. And, and well, your I mean, support what? helps make that possible. We just want to take a hot second and thank all of you beautiful, beautiful party patrons and everyone shopping through our affiliate links with the Amazons. We threw the new egg thing in with that. So you can just scroll down to the bottom of any page and all this business is at the very bottom. You don't have to click that support button and we get a little bit of cut. Uh, we have a Amazon wish list. We have some, we're getting down to pretty much the, High ticket items, but if you want to throw us, kick us a item or two or a few quid on PayPal or anything like that, that would be great. But uh, let's we get to a little Patreon update. We currently have 106 beautiful party patrons, Woo! 230 per Saturday night train wreck. Twenty, 20 wow. we're getting from that merch run. <laughs> Oh, it's getting a little scary, man. We got to thank somebody this week, too, because anybody who joins up as a patron, not only do you get your name in the credits, we got to give you a little mention. Who do we got this that, week? That, that, that boy in right. Damn it, Bobby. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mr. Mr. Bobby, Bobby D. D is um, he's an executive producer now. He is a super cool dude who um, gave us a bunch of money. So good on you, Bobby. Oh, Bobby. And, uh, check it out. Empty made a uh, under the cover art for a cover art on Saturday. He recorded that the orange box creation. If you want to watch him do his gimp foo, that's on our Patreon page. That's free. We try not to put oh. anything really behind a paywall. But you also get that, access that, that to that our Discord, is... which is where we're hanging out the other six days a week, doing all mm-hmm. that mental stuff. You even get the keys to the executive washroom if you want to kick it on that level. Your sport keeps us ad free, and uh, you get to be our bosses. And we hope uh, the cool stuff, like your own custom RSS feed and all that, is worth it. We try to give back, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you, everyone mm-hmm. out there I, doing I, that. Absolutely, Could you do it lot that. are awesome. So. Um, <laughs> Cherry pie? Mm, that actually yeah. looks delicious. Cherry pie. I don't Have know. It something, something, something. She's a sweet surprise. Uh, exactly. I, I, listen, here's the thing, man. I got like two words in it. I was like, I don't know this song. I just kind of know the rhythm <laughs> to it. The the only reason I know that was because it was in a weird alpaca like <laughs> thing that I listened to as a child and therefore it's embedded in my brain. Oh, no. Okay. This oh, is. Oh, hey. Uh, if you live in the UK, you've got outside and you've heard that one stupid shop in the central business district that is blaring Christmas music in October. Oh, yeah. Needful yes. things. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to help them, say, set up the mood. Well, now you can't because it's uh, sold out. But for a little while there, you could get a 3D um, Christmas tree for uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi. And Hol- it's holiday just, uh, tree, Pedro. There, there, there's a war. Yeah. A war? Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they had, uh, they were offering it in two um, configurations. You could get the pre-soldered kit, uh, which was just a teeny tiny smidge more expensive, and the uh, kit that you would need to solder yourself, which was just a teeny tiny bit cheaper. 
So yeah, it's a bunch of LEDs, and I guess you could get fancy with some speakers and blare some Christmas music of your own. Uh, if you're going to do that, I highly recommend um, uh, Fairy Tales of New York by the Pogues. Uh, see, I'm 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 a little upset because where's where, where's the Hanukkah shrub? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. The Raspberry Pi dreidel just spun out of control. That project got away from me, man. Um, that's that's all I would say about that. I don't know, man. I, I'm sorry that we kind of missed out on that. It like when I put this in the show notes, it's like, hey, we, we still got some of these kits available. But at the end of the day, you still might be able to look at it and be like, oh, oh, wait, maybe I can design something around that, that concept because they're. Some people like doing stuff like that, and I, I don't know, man. You know, just just in time for Halloween, though. You know, bring um, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, bringing you that uh, hot Christmas fire. Uh. You, 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 you got you to remember when uh, ha- Halloween equals Christmas because uh, Oct thirty one equals Deck twenty five. Hey, man, Halloween in heaven. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Tautology. Yeah, we're missing. Um, I I. I it's, I, I I I don't know. I I I can't I can't say what it is because that will break the the no swearing clause here. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe one of you can take it before I dig myself a, a hey, bigger hole. Hey man, it's haunted junk in the box. Uh, that's that's not any better. That's not any better. <laughs> but yeah, it is anyway, a... it's, it's 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 a Raspberry Pi Jack in the Box. If you want to, you know, frighten small children. I I'm or, saying, man, this 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 project serves no other purpose than terrorizing children, and you, you get extra bonus points if they're your own and probably not incarcerated. Um, who you you are the children? I, yeah. So the uh, developer, uh, the creator whatever you want to call him uh he basically did the single most evil thing you could which was he set up a camera to detect movement and when the camera detects movement the pie makes the jack in the box spring up we all float down, down here <laughs> and yeah, it we're, scares we're, we're, the living Pennywise piss in out of anyone <laughs> yeah the, the, this is a fantastic way to just like have a broken raspberry pie because yep. it's, it's, <laughs> someone's it's going to get to picked up that. and flung across the room. I mean, you, you could lose your pie and custody like in one night. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it's a very expensive free project, all things considered. I, I'm, I'm down with this uh, for all the wrong reasons. See, that's this is I, I've said this more than once on this show is when I see stuff like this, I just keep going because no application that I would use it for would a be legal and on the other hand, probably be safe for anyone involved. But th- this is fun. I, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I could see doing this just, yeah, no, it's it, the extra creepy factor is that at, it actually, uh, actuates the mechanism. It doesn't just spring the Jack in the box out. It turns the lever as you move across the cameras FOV. And when it's all wound up, no, you see, I'd want to take it a little extra with a the clown lights and some basic head tracking mm-hmm. for the clown. <laughs> yeah. Just have a servo to turn the head. It just starts playing. It just starts playing the Halloween theme as you walk in. Yeah. See, again, this is why I don't touch stuff. I'd end up the simple project you could probably do for under 100 quid. I'd have a thousand. I'd have a grand in this thing. And for and it, it would be the single most terrifying Raspberry Pi project this week. <laughs> Especially when it leaped at your face. Oh. <laughs> and it just, it just shoots knives at you. <laughs> <laughs> what Raspberry Pi doesn't. Um, I think that's going to do it for the show. Before we get out of here, we want to give you the opportunity to uh, effectively talk back to us, let us know what's going on in your world uh, and your penguins, ping, penguins, penguins powered life. I was going somewhere with those words. Pedro, tell the lovely people how they can do that. Yes, you can do that by literally accosting one of us out in the street and screaming in our direction. Of course, chances are we probably won't remember what you said because we will be chasing you down the street to give you a hug. So if you want to make sure that we get to listen to your feedback, your relationship, you're asking for some relationship advice. You want to send us a game for us to play on that Saturday show, what we do. Go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. For feedback here, make sure to pick LWDW on the little drop-downy box. 
it's pretty easy. Just fill out the form and we'll be happy to feature your comments, feedbacks, hints, thoughts, allegations, things better left than said. Small pro tip. Uh, it does basic MX domain validation. So if, if A, we don't want your email in the first place, but it's one way we'd get back to you. But the little system does check, at least make up one that's resolvable because <laughs> maybe once every two months I check the spam folder and I see some stuff that is probably legitimate, but it's herp to derp at derp to burp. And do, do, I never do, do, do you do like the uh, SPF validation as well. Eh, I'd have to go back and check the little plugin thing. Uh, mm. But just as a blanket policy, I never look at it. It never gets seen. It is just boop, gone, deleted. So with that in mind, uh, we, we got two little bits. Uh, one, which we were uh, lucky to, since you're still in the Finland on that yeah. time zone was directed at you from last week. Yeah, he's, this is this is from Sean. He says, during the show, Jordan, that's me, uh, mentioned wanted an ARM-based laptop. Pinebook 64 is a thing. Not a great thing, but a thing. Have you seen these? Yes, I have. And much like uh, the thing we covered this week, it's a tinker toy. It's not what I want. I want, like, the Octocore <laughs> badass, like, actual workstation that's ARM-based. Yeah. yeah that, that, so, that, to that, be that's, fair... Comparing the uh, the Pine 64 to that one DIY, the Terrace one that we talked about earlier, the Pine Book is much cheaper. Actually, much, much cheaper, like half the price. For the 14-inch version, it's uh, 100 bucks, And for the 11-inch version, it's um, 90 bucks. Still, so, still a tinker toy. Yeah, it's... You can't really do a whole lot of business, but then again, there's not a whole lot of software to get a hold of a whole lot of business. I think what Jordan wants is like a 4U with a 1080 display taped to the top of it and <laughs> a car battery with an inverter. Uh, uh, I mean, bank. that would be nice Just use too. a power bank instead of a battery. <laughs> I, I, I mean, if I need a dolly to move it around, then then we're, we're in business. Hey, man. I mean, you, you live in Canada most of the time. You can just strip sled. Yeah, no. Stra yeah. Strap it to my moose. Tell it to giddy up. We're on our way. Your government issued moves. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> He's Canadian. He gets one. <laughs> yeah. So what's 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 this next one? Uh, more more questions about laptops. Yeah, man. Indeed. And, uh, Andy's People talking still... about. Um, I'm, I'm going to read it. Watch this. Uh, he wrote in because uh, Pedro has reviewed a couple of laptops. He's actually got one. We got a laptop review in the chain right now. Yes. But one thing you know, if you know about Pedro and you know about him reading laptop reviews, uh, especially if you have to edit his videos down, there, there's always like an extra 10 minutes just on the keyboard. <laughs> or, 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 or edit his articles for that matter. Okay. You you have experience with this as well, I see. Of course yes. you do. Um, he writes... Uh, Good reviews, but what laptops don't come with a checklet keyboard these days? Uh, does the Lenovo ThinkPad keyboard count as a checklet keyboard? Question mark. Well, so I, uh, go ahead. I, I was just gonna say I actually like the Lenovo style checklet keyboard. Um, I'm I'm not a fan of them either. This one has a checklet keyboard. My work Mac has a checklet keyboard. It's not the greatest thing, just because I'm a fairly percussive typist, and so mm -hmm. it's just constantly smashing my fingers into like a metal backplate or a plastic backplate yeah. or whatever. So it's, it's not the greatest experience in the world, but the Lenovo ones are actually pretty nice. Plus they still have a nice degree of clickiness, which mm -hmm. I, I've mentioned this before. There's a, there's a lovely paper written by an engineer at Lenovo that says clicky keyboards actually subconsciously help you type faster because you react faster to sound than you do to sight. So well, uh, if you mean the actual Lenovo ThinkPads, then yes, those count as a chiclet keyboard. Now, if you're talking about the IBM ThinkPads, damn, this thing is heavy. This is not a chiclet keyboard. This is good old style membrane keyboard. And I love this one. I genuinely do love this keyboard. It's so good. It feels so satisfying when compared to all the laptops we've reviewed. It's a very satisfying laptop to type on and we, we I, need we need buckling spring laptop me, keyboards is what i'm hearing give me give me some more of this this tactile feedback this uh, very muted but still clacky sound please i want these keyboards back nope um what, what i'm surprised we haven't actually seen yet is just a 10 inch glass tablet you know with a capacitive surface so you could either touch type or you could swipey swipe 
Um, there was one. There, 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 there was the Microsoft one that was sort of like the, the book where it had the two screens. Yeah. And you could like uh, sort of type on it that never really went anywhere. Well, that never got was, released. And I've seen applications like uh, I've played with. Uh, I got lawyer friends and they still still Blackberries, man. They have one with a physical keyboard that you can swipe on. That's not right. I'm just talking like a completely reconfigurable, you know, effectively a tablet for your keyboard mm-hmm. that you can type. Because listen, we've all learned to type on glass surfaces. I'm sorry. You can do it. Trust me. If you mm-hmm. don't think you can. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not the greatest. On this tablet. It's, <laughs> it's not the greatest experience, though. And uh, de- depending on uh, depending on like the software keyboard you're using, it can be either a Slightly worse experience or a really, really bad experience. Nah. Yeah. But yeah, no, the uh, old IBM uh, ThinkPad, those had very nice keyboards. Bring more <laughs> of those back, please. I, I don't know, man. I, I avoid laptops like the plague, and I end up destroying laptop keyboards because of the way I type. Like this, when I was playing with SQL today, I was typing angry. That's a lot of pressure for a system to take. And uh, that's the thing. But, uh, I think this is, uh, that's going to do it, man. It's been fun. I think we're coming up on an hour, an hour, one minute. And uh, had fun time. I want to thank Jordan uh, for showing up all the way in Finland. Uh, or are you, or you're you gone? You're back on Canadian time next week, right? Um, liter- literally, what is happening is after we are done recording Linux Gamecast Weekly, I am shoving this laptop <laughs> in the bag and running to the airport. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. All right. So we're back to a two-man job. Uh, if you want to get a hold of any of us, uh, the Twitter th- things, I'm always um, Twitter blocked by the monitors. So, yeah, I'm at Hi. Stone, mm-hmm. uh, The Burning Fool and Unaccounted for, respectively. If you want to check that out, if you're listening to our audio version, there is a video version available. The uncut live version, which usually is like two hours long. If you want to go back and check that, that's available for patrons like three days early. If you're patient, just wait, it'll come out and you can check that nonsense out. If you're watching the video version, do keep in mind linuxgamecast.com. We have an audio version. We're available on Stitcher, Android play. I didn't put it on iTunes cause I don't feel like binding that windows tablet so I can get back into them. <laughs> what, what about the Zune store? Never. We <laughs> never got on the Zune store, man. That is one of my great failings in life. And for that, I will eternally apologize. But, um, Beautiful people, it's been fun, it's been real. We'll see you next week because it's time to roll them credits. Hey, credits. Look what? at, look, 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 look. That's our names. And then I, there's a bunch I, of names. I, I'm, I'm in the middle. Look. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like a really messed up there YMCA. The really awesome people giving us all them shackles. Thank you very much. Young man, are you listening to me? I said, young man, what do you want to be? <laughs> hey, man, uh, we're, we're getting pinched those pities. We're, we're getting closer and closer to that mixer. Then we're going to be able to do the call-in shows, six-person shows. Uh, I'll be able to noise gate Pedro because Pedro is going to have a hard learning curve to actually learn use his microphone correctly, um, which we learned yesterday during our live mm-hmm. stream. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough of that nightmare feel.